Hello everyone and welcome to episode 72 of the Cherry Heart podcast. I'm Sandra and you can find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk and I shall also pop the link in the down bar. Um, you'll be able to find links to the things I talk about, the yarns and the patterns and anyone I mention I'll pop a little link in those show notes so you can find them easily if you want to. Um, you can find me frog in your throat. Um, you can find me around the web as Cherry Heart and I'm on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT and I think that's it for the intro. Um, it's school holidays here now so I think, I can't even remember if this podcast is later than it normally would be or not. I've, I've already lost track of time and reality. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe I'm a week late. I'm not sure. Anyway, I wanted to get another podcast out before um, I disappear for a little while in the summer holidays. Um, so I'm putting this one up now and then, you know, we go away and we've got various things going on. So perhaps there'll be a little gap before our next podcast again after this. Um, but yeah, I wanted to speak to you. I've got things to tell you and um, it was Fiber Reese last weekend too, although I'm not sure if I'll get this edited and up today, so it might be a couple of weekends ago by the time you watch it, but um, yeah, but I wanted to share um, some of the things I got there, if that's something you're interested. I'll pop it at the end though, just in case, because some people don't like the sort of haul video, do they? But if you are interested, that will be coming up. Um, I'm just looking around at what I've got to talk about. I feel sort of disconnected from the last podcast, so I can't remember what I've shared. But um, I'll do what I normally do, which is I start with things that I've done, that I've finished, and then we'll take it from there. So the first thing I've done, actually, is this one, um, which is another version of my fluttering by shawl. Let me just get it to show you. Right, here we are. Here it is. So the fluttering by one, I've had this um, hanging up for a little while. That was the first one I made and um, the pattern came out a little while ago. So thank you to everyone who's already brought a copy of that. That's so appreciated, thank you. Um, but yes, I found this one so useful and I've loved wearing it so much and I love how it looks and the fact sort of, even though it's warm at the minute, on the cooler days I'm still able to wear it because it's so light so I thought I'd make myself one in another colour and I was umming and ahhing over what colour and then I found in my stash this which actually I've got a little bit of it left so I can show you it sort of all um, what's the word wound up so this is called Precious Metals. It's a watercolours and lace yarn. So this is 100% silk yarn. So it's got this beautiful sheen to it. And oh, the feel of it is just out of this world. <laughs> it's so amazing. So it's sort of a very sort of pinky grey. There's kind of it's hard to see on this to sort of pick it up the true beauty of it I think but it's kind of pinky it's sort of got a grey tone to it and the sort of little very subtle sort of patches of the grey being stronger and lighter and then it's got these tiny little flecks in it sort of little orangey flecks in it and this is obviously how it looks all made up but oh my god this I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> this is perfect for so many outfits that I would wear. It's just one that I can wear with so many things. Not that I've got on now because it's got yellow on it, but but yeah, I just love it. Um, it was actually really quick to make. Um, I started making it, and I must admit, the first when I did the very first bit, I made the very first little butterfly motif. I looked at it and thought, oh my god, it's perfect, I love it. But it did take me a little while to fall in love with actually making it because partly because it's lace weight and there's always that little adjustment because I think 
maybe if, I mean when you knit with lace weight or when you crochet with lace weight there's kind of that adjustment while you get used to it because it's just so fine it's sort of two ply yarns I mean I know lots of thicker yarns are also two ply but they they would call this categorize it as a two ply yarn so it's very fine and that just takes a little bit of getting used to and I think whereas knitters quite often use lace weight or you know not all of them obviously but it's more common I think crocheters would perhaps use it less is that gross well it is gross generalization but is it also true I'm not sure I think I think that's reasonably safe to say anyway so I think there is a bit of a learning curve with getting used to crocheting with lace it sort of feels quite fiddly and it takes a little while to sort of settle down with it and get into the swing of it so I found when I crocheted with lace before for example when I made that one and other things I just found it takes a few I don't know how many like a few rows depends what it is doesn't it but say half an hour or maybe an hour or so to sort of settle down and sort of feel more comfortable with it but because this is a hundred percent silk it actually took even more getting used to it. it's even more sort of slippery and slidey everywhere and it's not like I couldn't do it or I had difficulty doing it but it just took a little bit while before I settled into it and I could actually enjoy it so I was sort of making it and it was probably about up here I think before I really sort of thought started to get into the swing of it up to here I was like I really want this I really like it but I don't actually want to make it I want the finished product but I don't want to make it but yeah once I sort of got over this kind of point here I was away then so it, it did come eventually so yeah so if you haven't crocheted with lace before I'd recommend not starting with 100% silk just because the learning curves that even more steeper I think but anyway now that it's made I love it and just the feel of it, it the 100% silk is so, I didn't expect it to be so soft, I expect it to have this gorgeous shimmer that you can see and I expected it to have a really good drape but I didn't expect it to be so sort of squidgy soft. Oh, I love it. So yeah, so I'm very pleased to finish that. Um, once I started to, you know, once I've crossed this stage and I started to enjoy it more, I just raced through the rest and then I realised it was sort of Saturday evening. I thought if I can get the border done tonight I might be able to wear it to five roost tomorrow so I did that so I quickly cranked the border out and blocked it and um, it was dry by morning so I so I wore it yes but that is perfect for going with so many things of which I have said stop repeating yourself Sandra um yes and um, so if you did want the pattern for that, that's one of mine. So that's called the Fluttering by Shawl. I shall link that. I shall also link in where I got this yarn from. Um, because that is gorgeous. Um, and then the next thing I finished is actually these. Um, I was making some... What are these called? Coat hangers, coat hanger covers, some crocheted coat hanger covers. So I spoke about this a couple of podcasts ago, I think. And I'd made these ones ages ago. And I'd popped the pattern up. Um, so I have done that. So I have made some more and I, um, I have added that to the pattern. So if you've already bought it, you can just go and download the update for free. You should, you probably have had the email about it already. Um, it should send an email out to you, but just in case. Um, and then if you haven't bought it yet, um, it's still, well I think it's still very reasonable. So um, yeah, it's still not an expensive pattern. But I have got quite a few different versions in now. So I've got this one, which is really cute. So it's got this nice little lacy border on it and some nice little dangly hearts and then some bigger hearts to match. So I've got that one, oops, is the same as this one. I've done this one in two different colours. So what I've used for this is Aran weight for the hanger and then I've used like sport or four ply for sort of the little decorative elements. Um, so I found this is quite good. I've used sort of lots of little leftover scraps from my four ply and minis and things to make these little decorative bits. And also what I started to do 
is use four ply doubled so if I had quite a bit of like a big mini or quite a bit of something left over I just held it double to do the covers but I thought I'd try a variegated one see how that looked which I love I like how that looks this is such a pretty mini and um, so this is the other star so it's a plain more plain hanger with no border but it's got these different flowers on it and these little loopy leaves so I love that and I did that in two colours as well oh I love them but these are so good for hanging sort of my crocheted shawls on for a start but also because this is I've used wool by the way mostly um pretty much exclusively actually I think some of it's merino because that's what I had in four ply um and but like this is actually a bit of an alpaca one in there this one is 100 percent. this was cascade actually cascade 220 so that's 100 percent just wool but just if you have something that's woolly it just gives you a bit more grip when you're hanging something on it it sort of grips it a little more like if you had something very sheer it wouldn't be quite as good so i've tried to make sure i stick to you know nothing with silky or nothing sort of bamboo or sort of any shiny acrylic -y. I've gone for something that's a little bit more matte and got a little bit more texture to it so yes yeah, so those ones so that's three different designs now and then the last one is this one but I went for something a bit different so I haven't added a middle decoration or a border to this one because I thought perhaps there was enough going on but I don't know maybe it could do with something else I feel like it wants something else in the middle personally maybe you could put flower in the middle as well I think that would work with flowers in the middle so all the different elements are kind of mix and match so apart from this hanger is made in a slightly different way but you could add the flowers from this one to it if you wanted to or like you could add these flowers to this hanger if you wanted to so all the sort of different bits you can they're kind of all listed down so you could just choose but yeah I really like this design on there as well I think that looks really pretty and I did that in a couple of colours as well I think it's quite striking when there's quite a big contrast in the yarn these ones were all four ply that I held double but you could use Aran weight or worsted weight as well yeah so those are the four designs that are in the pattern now so yeah if you fancy some crochet hangers <laughs> I use um these are wooden hangers um they give you this nice sort of shape that's easy to cover um and I think they're the 42 inch ones, I think. I'll pop the link in. Um, I just got mine off Amazon, so I popped the link in my show notes as well. It is an affiliate link because I'm part of Amazon affiliates. So, you know, there is a chance they might pay me a third of a penny or something if you buy from me for using that link. But just so you know, um, yeah. So one, that's one. That's two, that's three, and that's the fourth design. But I think they look really pretty in your wardrobe. They're really handy for hanging crochet on, and it just looks pretty. I've actually got a little, um, a tiny, it's a lacy, um fit you it's called it's like a little sort of shawl that just goes kind of around the neck and the shoulders like this and it's beautiful i made it ages ago and i don't really wear it i guess it doesn't really go with my style it's it's very victorian in style in actual fact but it was so beautiful i just wanted to make the pattern so i've actually just got one of those hanging up in, on my wall on one of these pretty hangers one of these original ones in actual fact it just looks really nice i think and obviously i like hanging them around here and stuff but yeah I don't know it's one of those things it's a bit of an oddity isn't it I'm sure it won't appeal to that <laughs> won't, won't appeal to everyone getting hangers and crocheting them 
but I like it. I actually even got some more hangers to cover, so. <laughs> and I do like, it's always nice to have a nice little scrappy project, isn't it? To use up, you know, the little flowers and the little hearts only use the tiniest amount, so you can use up even the smallest scraps of your favourite yarns get used that way. But I'm going to hang this up again. Yes, this is turning into a bit of what I've done and pips, isn't it? Patterns in progress. So, well, those patterns aren't in progress anymore. They're out and they're available. So let's move on. Oh, this is another sort of overlap of done and patterns. And it's sort of done. So I showed you before, I can't remember if it was last time or before on the podcast, but um, I showed you I'd made a little bit of a patch of crochet hexagons. So I've been working on that and actually I've got quite a bit more now and it's finished. So this is what I've got and it's going to be a cushion cover. So that's the front of my cushion cover. So I just had a few of these little hexes work together before and I've had lots of requests for the pattern for how I'm doing these. So um, I've noted down what I've done, but I just wanted to hang on so that I could make a note of what I did for the little half hexagons. And I made these, you don't need to have these, you could just use the halves. But um, I made these kind of little three quarter hexagons as well, which I quite like. So I've popped that in and I've also made the half. Um, so yeah, so that's the half that's got a flat bit in it to fill in those ends but I've also as well as this sort of longer I've also got one that's that half the half with the point on it so it'd be like that so you can make an actual half a hexagon to fill in this side or you can make these slightly bigger ones whichever you prefer but I just like the look of those I thought they looked quite cute and neat yeah so I've written up the pattern for all of those different variations um and I think that will probably be on the blog by the time you see this so I'll stick a, a link into that but yeah so now I've done my front I've just got to make the actual cushion I don't think I'm going to crochet the whole thing I think I'm going to sew the cushion and just put the crocheted bit on the front and this is actually a recreation of a fabric cushion I made that I did with English paper piecing for the hexagons and I put onto a plain side here and I had a little bee, a little fabric bee that I, um, what's it called when you sew fabric on a fabric? A plique, a little plique bee and he had sort of like his little flight path I'd put in embroidery thread. So yeah, I was going to recreate that in crochet because that fabric version has bitten the dust now. It's seen a lot of wear and it is now looking the worst for it. Yeah, so that's my cushion front. So it's kind of done, in the crochet bit's done, but it isn't actually a finished object yet. So yeah, I wanted to show you that. And these again are just minis mostly, or little scraps of things. I used a lot of, I got a package from Lay Family Yarns, and she did her, um, like a friends thing where she dyes three minis and she gets another yarn dyer, a yarn dyeing friend to dye three minis and then they send them out together. So her friend's month I got it was Sam of Betsy Makes, my lovely friend. So yes, yeah, so I've got my Betsy Makes minis in here and my Lay Family Yarn minis in here and then I just popped it up with a few other scraps and bits I had. So that's really pretty and quite special as well. I had those put aside to do something nice with and sort of to really enjoy and I did I very much enjoyed it I was amazed how quickly this came together as well I thought because they're very small as you can see they're only I don't know about an inch and a half maybe so I thought this would be very arduous but actually it came together reasonably quickly I mean it helped I didn't do the whole cushion cover in it and yeah I did half plain too but but yeah Despite that, I thought it came together quite quickly. I'm very repetitive today, aren't I? I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm just going to pause a moment. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Just having a parcel delivered. Um, so that's all the things that I've done. 
um, I think, apart from my Flory, my cardigan that I was working on. Again, mentioned previously. Sorry if you weren't here. If this is your first episode and you weren't here for all these previous mentions, I do apologise. But yeah, it's a cardigan I'm working on. So I finished it all now and it's blocking at the moment. So yay, excited for that. And I want to make something else now. I want to knit another garment now. But anyway, we'll go into that later. Um, so let's show you what I'm working on now. So after making that lace weight shawl, I was inspired to make something else light and lacy weight. Plus it was that boiling hot day. When was it? Last week. We had a bit of a heat wave here um, and it was sort of 30, up in the 30s basically, 32s. But one day it was 37, 38. I think it might have even reached 39. It was, oh, we're not used to that kind of heat here. So anyway, hot weather made me want to work on something else lacy. And I'd also been meaning to work on for some time another quite contrary shawl. So this is, again, sorry, so it's very me this episode, uh, another one of my patterns. Um, and I published it ages ago, years and years ago. Um, and it was quite contrary shawl and I had mitts that I'd made to go with it. So it was Merry Merry mitts. And so I, you could buy them separately or together. You know, how does your garden grow together, you see? Bit of a nursery rhyme in a minute. Anyway, so this shawl, I've been meaning to revisit the pattern just to go over it and like maybe make a ch add a chart to it. I thought it might be quite nice because it was quite a popular pattern originally. So I thought it might be nice to give it a little bit of a revamp. And obviously, and also because I wrote it quite a long time ago, I sort of, it's interesting how my style has evolved over time. So, I don't, you know, I'm not going to go through and rewrite it or anything, but I might just sort of brush up a few bits to keep it more in keeping. But anyway, this is it. So I was originally, I thought I'll remake, the original one was in double knit, and I thought, oh, I'll remake it, but I'll remake it in full ply because I've got more of that now and I don't have that much double knit. But then when it was hot and I was looking through my lace for that, I came across this which is a drops lace. I'm not sure of the colourway. Might be one of those where it's alpaca and mulberry silk this is, but only 30% silk, so it's a lot easier than that was to do. I'm just gonna see if there's a colourway on here, if it's one of those ones where it's, you know, it might just be a number, mightn't it? Well, it might be that I can't find any information whatsoever about it. Colour 8105. Well, that was done, wasn't it, after all that? Colour light blue, basically. Um, yes, but this is, was very reasonably priced, and I've had it for a little while. I don't even know if I got it with something in mind. It wasn't this, anyway, if I did. But yeah, I thought it would might work quite nicely in lace, and it might sort of scrunch up in that nice way that those do, and be sort of... I don't know, more of a decorative shawl if that makes sense. Like some shawls you want sort of big and bulky and woolly to keep you warm. Some shawls you just want a bit lighter for when you want a little something. And some shawls just set off an outfit and look pretty. <laughs> well, hopefully they do that as well anyway, but you know what I mean. Yeah, so I thought this would go with a lot of things as well. This colour is sort of quite nice and pastel and go with a lot of things in my wardrobe so yeah so I'm happy with how that's coming out it's hard to sort of tell really because lace obviously it will need blocking before you can see it really but it's got these different sections in it so again going with the quite contrary nursery rhyme it's got pretty maids uh, what was this one? Oh, silver bells and then cockle shells and they each have sort of different sections and I've got to put the border on this yet. It's got a border with my favourite dangly bits. Of course, this was the original dangly bit shawl and I haven't stopped making them since really. Yeah, so I'm happy with that's how that's coming on. Um, and I've done a chart for this part. I haven't done the chart for the border yet. So yeah, once I've done this, 
I'll sort of send a little revamped version of that pattern out. Again, if it's one you've brought before, you you know, you still get all the update and everything for free and the charts and everything. You wouldn't have to buy it again or anything like that. But it might encourage someone who sort of prefers charts, it might encourage you to perhaps give it a whirl if, you know, the fact that it didn't have them before put you off at all. So that's fun and that's come up worked up really quickly as well so I'll probably sit and see if I can get the border on over the weekend for this and get that blocked um, and then we're getting to we're nearly at kind of the fibery stuff but I've got another whip that I've started that will what's the word you know bring us seamlessly to the, my fibre east tool, which is this one. So one of the yarn stalls that I know that I wanted to visit was the Fibre Fox. Um, I've been following her for a little while on Instagram and she always has the most beautiful yarns, very draw worthy. And um, I also knew she was going to be at Fibre east, so I've been kind of keeping my powder dry. I thought I won't order online, I'll wait and sort of see in all its splendour there and get something there so that's what I did so I one of the ones I got was uh, this rainbow yarn I'll show you I posted a picture on Instagram actually before I round it wound it up it looks so beautiful in the skein and I laid it all you know unwound it and laid it out it looks so stunning um, but yeah this is it wound up which also looks pretty but you don't kind of get the full glory of all the colors in it when it's all together like this but yeah so it's like a rainbow but kind of a pastel rainbow I guess you'd call it and um, the colorway name is unicorn number two so that's like the hashtag symbol to denote number so unicorn number two and and because um, I was interested to see how this knit up so I cast it on straight away was the point And this is how it is looking. I've done a sock, obviously. So it's just a little shorty sock because I've done the heel already. Let's show you the other side. So, haven't got the... so it's coming with a sort of little kind of striping type of pattern I'm getting as the rainbow sort of whirls around the socks. But it's such a beautiful, delicate rainbow. So yeah, I've, I've just done little shorty ones because I wanted to see how it knit up. I'm kind of intrigued how it crochets up. So if I just make shorty socks, I'll have enough to either make another pair of socks or maybe I could crochet something. Not quite sure what. It might just be nice for sort of scrappy projects and like it would have been nice in my baton bed blanket. But I haven't got that on the go anymore, so yes my only regret is that i've done a square heel in this which i sort of did without thinking about it a great deal just because i've been doing them a lot lately and kind of enjoying it so i've done the eye of partridge what's the word heel flap I've done a square heel turn and then my nice short little gusset but of course where i've put a gusset in it's changed the striping and it's made the colour go a bit different, which I actually really like. It sort of pulled the sort of rainbow colours together, which looks really cool, actually. But it doesn't fit in with the sort of striping of the rest of it. So I kind of wish, because I don't like that kind of thing, I like order. <laughs> I don't mind if it's order like this or order like this, but I don't want to mix the two different ones. So I kind of wish I'd put a fish lips kiss heel in because then it would have done strange things on the heel with the colours but then when I went back to working in the round it would have been the same number of stitches so I wouldn't have got this patch of differentness. But hey ho, I knew that, see I knew that in my mind that that would be better and well, I kind of ignored it when it came to it and I don't know quite why I ignored that. But anyway, but yeah these are quite cute. And these are going to be for my little girl, my little baby girl, who is not little or a baby anymore. Um, these are 
pretty much knit as I would knit for me. I've just reduced down slightly for the foot because she's got very skinny feet. Um, but yeah, this bit I left. Uh, the cuff and heel I did exactly as I would do for me, 32 stitches. Yes, but they're whizzing along. I think I did most of that sort of the cuff and the little tiny little bit of leg that I've got on the heel turn. I think I did all last night. So they'll be quick to finish. But yeah, I was intrigued to see how that came out. And I like it. So that was one of my fibre Easter buys. Um, yeah, so pips, I've kind of, my patterns I've talked about as I've gone along endlessly. So I won't sort of bother to do a special section on that because you've heard enough, quite frankly. Um, what else do I normally talk about? Podmail, I'm going to leave because it's been holiday and I haven't even thought about it. And I haven't prepped nearly enough for this, but then what's new? So I haven't looked at that. Um, and then it will be incoming goodies next. So this will be pretty much the Fibre East haul. Um, and just a magazine that I got. I'll show you that first. And then if you want to go off for the rest of the haul, you can. So this I got. I'd seen it advertised um, on Eden Cottage Yarns, actually, and on Helda, is that your name? Get so used to knowing people from the Instagram handles, don't you? Yes, Helda. Um, yes, from Eden Cottage Yarns and Helda, and they'd have been posting about a pattern that they had in this magazine, so I thought, oh, I'll try and get it. And uh, yeah, I sent the hubby out with a picture of the front cover and instructions and he found it for me because he's a good old sort. So yeah, I got a copy of this, but it's quite a nice little one. It's got some nice designs in it, but let me show you why I wanted it particularly. On the page I folded over so I'd be able to find it easily. Actually, there's a page without any pattern on it, isn't there? I should have folded that one over. Oh my goodness, no, I can't find it anywhere. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Ah, here we go. So it's this one. This was the post that I saw, the picture that I saw. I was like, ah, oh, oh my goodness, that's so pretty. So it's a shawl, but look, it's got this lovely flowery sort of branchy motif on it. Tassels as well. <laughs> yum, yum. Isn't it beautiful? So Eden Cottage Yarns is the yarn she's used and she's selling kits for it as well at the moment. Which I may... Here we are, this is another really nice picture. That I've got. I need something to cover up. Oh, hang on, hang on, we can make this work. There we go. <laughs> this picture here as well, looking kind of... It's a close up of the motif, but I just thought that was so pretty. So I kind of want to make that. Um, I'm not sure if I'll actually order yarn especially for it, even though Eden Cottage Yarns is gorgeous and they've put some gorgeous kits together. I think I might just sort of make do with what I've got because you know there is no shortage here. But yeah, I just thought that was beautiful, so I just wanted to give. Um, get this round. Held her a little shout out as well because she makes some utterly beautiful things. I'll put her Instagram name down here um, because you know just to make sure I spell it right so you can find it if you need to. Yeah but she makes some beautiful things so just wanted to mention that. What else did I find? I found folded over something else here as well. There was a nice waistcoat that I quite liked. I don't know if I'd wear it though. Uh, let's see if I can get the picture without the pattern on again. Looks like quite a quick... Uh, see, they've got a picture of it here, but it doesn't show it very well. You can see her skirt quite nicely. You can even see her blouse right, but the little bit of crochet they're actually showing you. I can't really see. It's just like a little bolero bit with a kind of board around. I quite like that as well. DK. Could probably wrestle something up to make that. Might make that. Um, yes, so now I'm going to go into the Fibre East haul then, the incoming goodies from Fibre East. So if you do want to sort of depart and 
you know, not be tempted into purchasing or just don't want to see me ruffling on about everything I got, then I shall say goodbye to you now and I will see you next time, probably. Okay, I've tipped everything out, so we'll just go for, through it all as I come to it, I think. Uh, where do I begin? I got quite a few bits, as I always do. I tend, I mean, I do buy outside festivals, obviously, but I do tend to kind of save myself quite a bit for festivals now and not do a massive amount of purchasing in between. So... I guess I'm getting in my excuse for why I've bought quite a lot, aren't I? Let's start with Fibre Fox because I showed you one of those that I got already. But let me just show you the other one because it's just stunningly beautiful. So this, um, I mean, Fibre Fox does all kinds of exquisite yarns. It's very, what's the word? I don't know. It's very kind of feels like my kind of palette. It really appeals to me a lot of what she does. And she also does these beautiful, I think these are quite trademarky, the Fibre Foxy in my opinion, but this kind of beautiful fade down the hank or the skein from one colour to another colour. She's got so many beautiful combinations that do that. But this one particularly spoke to me and it's also got the little glittery, glittery. It's the kind of place as well where I could go and get... Um, yarn for a garment. I think she had some really nice sort of subtle colours that are just so beautiful in a garment. So this one's called Gloaming um, and it's on her Twinkle Sock yarn. It's got a little bit, um, it's a merino nylon, it's got a little bit of Stellina in there and it's a four ply. So that will probably be socks. But maybe not, I don't know. Um, I just kind of got it because I liked it. So that's my other Fibre Fox one. I wanted to get something that felt really kind of, you know, like her signature kind of style. And then maybe once I've enjoyed those, I'll perhaps go back and think about a sweater quantity, I think. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. What else have I got? I've got this one. This is a little bit different, I think. Well, a little bit different for me. It's a bit more bold than a lot of the ones I've got. So this one is from Third Vault Yarns, um, who I have brought from before actually. I was looking at her yarns and I was attracted to one. I went, oh that's lovely, picked it up, looked at the colour and I thought, I'm sure I've got this. <laughs> and I had, it was the one I got before. So you're always attracted, well, I always find myself pulled to the same thing. So I went for this one. There was another one I really liked that was like a beautiful sunset. Really quite dramatic. I really loved the colours in that, but I wasn't... It could have been socks, but I wasn't quite sure how I'd use it. But I went for this one. Because I really loved the colours of it. And I think it just gives me a few more options other than socks. I was wondering about maybe a hat. Not a crown or a tiara, which is what this looks like, but yeah, maybe a hat. Maybe I could get one of those really nice pom-poms to go on it, because everyone's done that, haven't they? And I haven't done that yet. I'm missing behind on the trend. But yeah, that's beautiful. So this colourway is... This one's 100% merino. No nylon in this one. Four ply again, but it's Lake Silence. Which I thought was a reference to the Doctor Who with the silence in it the sort of creatures that made you forget and I thought Lake Silence was where it was in one of the episodes but I'm not sure it is I think they might have called it something else when I looked it up so maybe I've got my references wrong I'll have to ask Lola I'll have to ask <laughs> but yeah so that one's beautiful um, and it might look nice twinned with something else as well maybe for a shawl I haven't decided uh, then, oh, let's show you this one. So this is from Mince B Yarns. This is from Marie. Is it Marie or Maria? I'm not quite sure, actually. I think Marie. Um, I didn't get a chance to speak to her because she was busy at the time. But, but yeah, I bought from Mint B Yarns as well. Do you know, I went with the intention of buying from people I haven't bought from before and actually I've only done 
you yeah, haven't done that much about the fibre fox was someone I haven't brought from before I'd... and that's it wow I did really appallingly at that didn't I <clears throat> um, so this one was directly influenced by that because I'd finished it the night before it was 100% silk and I really loved the look and the feel of it I thought I'm gonna get some more silk so this again is 100% silk it's got that beautiful shine to it sort of almost metallic-y but where that one's pink, this one's is a beautiful light blue. Yeah, so I think this will probably be around here somewhere too. Something light and open like that so I get the same sort of drapey gorgeous effect. I want to do something different, although it would look nice in that as well. But this is four ply, so it's 100 grams, 400 meters, so I don't know if I'd have enough to make one of those that takes more yardage in a finer yarn so I might have to come up with something else but the colour of this one is Robin's Egg and it's just perfect perfect colours um, so much so in fact that I got something quite similarish when I went to Mr B's store Bird Street UK, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, so Mr. B of Bird Street UK. So um, there's bags and there's yarn. But the, again, so the Fibre Fox, my favourite stools I think were the Fibre Fox because there's so many gorgeous things, really hard to choose. Mr. B, again, gorgeous colourways. I could have easily picked up anything on his stand and come away with it and been happy. And I could have picked up loads and loads of things and been really ecstatic. <laughs> but I decided to just go for one colour in the end and I went for two. And this is going on a bear hunt. It's a merino nylon and it's four ply as per 100 grams. So that's just beautiful. And as you can see, colours relate really well with that, don't they? They could all go together necessary I suppose but I was wondering about because I've got two skeins I was watching Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful hello Ali um, who I met up with at the festival actually so that was fun um, yes I was watching her vlogs and she was saying that she'd made a bundle on her group on Ravelry for two skein garments there's knit ones and crochet ones on there and when I finished my Flory cardigan, I was immediately thinking, ooh, another garment. And then I, but I, I've only got two of anything at the minute. I haven't got um, any more in one colourway. But then I remembered what Ali had said. So I had a look and there's a couple of patterns on there that I quite like. So I was thinking this might become a garment. Assuming I can make the patterns in my size with only two. I'll have to check that. But yeah, really love that. Gorgeous speckling's, absolutely stunning colours. There were loads I could have got, there's so many. Hmm. Temptation. Horrendous. Um so that's that one. Uh, what else have I got to talk about? And then the other stool, so the Fibre Fox, Mr. B. And then the wool barn, which isn't new. <laughs> she doesn't do loads and loads of festivals, but she does do Fibre East. And pretty much every year now, I kind of make a beeline for her and buy stuff because I just love her stuff. She's so talented. All of these people are so talented. But um, yes, yeah, so. I went, I wasn't going to this time make a beeline, like I said, I plan to go and buy from different places. But when they're just your favourite ones and you just get pulled in to them, you can't kind of help yourself, can you? So I went for, I went for this, which is ballet slipper on her twist sock. So that's a merino nylon. Uh, with a view to making up my pearly dot socks in it, which is a pair of socks I made in that lovely Craftanoon Treats yarn, if you were here before. 
um, that she asked me to test for her and was gorgeous. So I've written the pattern up and I just wanted to make another pair in one of the other sizes just to sort of go through the pattern again and as a preliminary check. So I got that with a view to that, but actually I changed my mind and wound up this yarn. I might make it in this yarn instead. So this was, this was actually a cashmere one, so probably not the most sensible plan I've ever had, because cashmere and socks. But it has got some nylon in as well. So it's her cashmere sock full of pie, 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. So it's not a massive amount of nylon and it has got the cashmere, so I'll have to be delicate with them. But I am much better at being quite delicate with my socks now, so I think I'll be okay as long as I look after them. And this colourway was mist. So it's kind of greyish, but it's kind of like a sea greeny grey as well. So yeah, so I've wound that up and I might do my pearly dot socks out of that. But that's okay, because this pink will go with lots of other things, or could just be a different pair of socks. I wonder if we could go with that actually. Mm, maybe. Um, and then I got these two as well, which will probably go together. Uh, this is the Orchid colourway in mohair silk lace. Uh, so that's 50 grams, but you still get 459 yards because it's lace weight. And then this one is bramble, and that's the twist sock colour again. So I'm thinking they will be one project. Whether I'll hold them, hold the mohair and this together to make a fluffy version of something, or whether I'll perhaps stripe them so you can kind of see the mohair and something. They do that, what is it, birds for feather shawl? That does look nice, isn't it? I'm kind of tempted with that. Maybe. I don't know. Undecided, but I think that'll be a nice autumnal project. This colour is exquisite. Mm. Um, and then I got some other bits and bobs. Oh, let me tell you about this actually, because I bumped into lovely Helen from Woolly Chic. Um, she didn't have a stall this year, but she is running a retreat. And I was so excited, but the dates, I'm not sure the dates are going to be good for me. Um, it's in October. So this is going to be in Hitchin. So if you are local to my kind of area, kind of, um, well, Hitchin area, but surrounding, you might find this more convenient, but it's a retreat um, with accommodation. So you could travel down and go to it. So let me tell you about it. So it's Made in Hitchin is the name of it. And it's on the 19th and 20th of October this year. So I know my September and October is a nightmare. So, I'm not sure. Anyway, I haven't looked yet, so we'll see. But anyway, so it's a weekend of, so you can you can be sewing, knitting or crochet. You don't have to do all of them, you know, but any of those crafts are welcome. They're going to have master classes. They're going to have workshops. There's going to be a marketplace. And I think if you're local, I think they're opening the marketplace and you can just go to that so you don't have to come to the retreat as well if you want to. So that might be quite interesting. Perhaps I could pop to that actually, even if I can't get to the rest of it. Hmm. Um, it's in a lovely rural location. It's in the Needham House Hotel, which is kind of just set outside of Hitchin. Um, I know roughly where it is. So that would be lovely. So they've got workshops with uh, Charlotte Newland. They've got pattern cutting with Alice and Co. Knititation. I wonder what that is. With James McIntosh and Dr. Thomas Ernst. Mosaic crochet with Anna mm. Nikki Pirowitz. I think that might be right. Sock knitting with Jane Hickman and a one to one fit clinic with Alice and Co. Ooh. So let me give you the oh I was gonna say the website, but actually it's got an Instagram on here. So at Made in Hitchin. And there's an email which is hello at madeinhitchin.co.uk. So I guess there must be a Made in Hitchin website as well. Am I being blind and just can't see that? Yes, but you can pop along to the Instagram anyway, Made in Hitchin Instagram. Yes, so I think you can either go to the retreat and stay over, or I think you can just go to the day. So if you live locally and you want to kind of save on the cost of accommodation, 
you can um, just go for the day. But yeah, I thought I would give that a little mention because I really want to do one of these. And I either haven't got in quick enough or um, it's sort of money as well, isn't it? But yeah, I haven't looked how much this is yet. I'll have to have a go and have a look. But yeah, I do fancy the idea of going along one. So it's, so the fact that she's sort of doing that you can go along and you don't have to stay and it's close to me might make that a bit more possible, mightn't it? But yeah, I thought I would mention it in case that's relevant to you or something you might be interested in. I know a lot of you would be way too far away to even think about it, but some of you won't be, so I mentioned that. And then I got some other little bits and bobs. So I got a lovely gift. As I said, I bumped into lovely Ali from Starry Eyes Ali, and she gave me some of her gorgeous stars that she makes. And she showed me where she got the thing to make them as well. So I'm going to make some of these because I think these would be nice in like a garland, wouldn't they? Really pretty. And then she gave me some of her lovely hand dyed yarn. Oh, they're so pretty. So this one, if you've seen her blog, vlog she'll know about this she dyed some yarn and she did some um in the garden in a jar in the garden used the heat of that roasting hot day we had last week to dye the yarn which is a really clever idea so i've got a little hank of that which she has called this she's got little labels on them and everything look she's called them dodgy yarn like her dodgy bags that's so cool you're gonna have to have a brand ellie you're gonna have to start doing yarn and bags and selling online i see it now it started with pins it's going to develop um so she's called it fahrenheit i fahrenheit is that one fahrenheit 100 fahrenheit it could be no fahrenheit it's just got a little one or an i in front of it <laughs> all pooling bleeding and splodgy is included free of charge <laughs> Died inexpertly in Kent, UK. It's not inexpertly. Look at it. It's beautiful. You're too modest, Ellie. Way too modest. And then this one, what she called this one? Right surfer. I don't think this one got dyed in the garden, but I do think she did it the same day. They're just beautiful. I love those. Thank you, Ellie. Um, I shall save those to put it in a beautiful scrappy project. After, after I forwarded them for a bit. <laughs> I've got a sort of a few that it's hard to use some of them sometimes, isn't it? Because they're a bit precious. And then I got a few other little knick-knacky bits. So I got this bag just because I saw it and I kind of had to. Because it had my boy on it. Um, oh, I meant to look this up so I could tell you the stand. Because I'm not sure. I think it's Rella. Rela. R-E-L-A, I think it is, designs. I'll put it down here if that's not right. And I'll link all these in the show notes. Like I say, I'll link all the shops and, you know, because they'll all have online shops, all the stands that were there. So this is a Dash Hound bag, and it's super cute. And I particularly like that it's got a sort of sitting up one and a diving one. And they're very, very accurate, very reminiscent of my little bird as he saunters around and it's actually got a waterproof lining so I might not use that for knitting I might use that for sort of taking holiday bits and bobs about not sure and then I went to Lana Boo's uh, stand and I got some stitch markers so there's this little tropical set that's a pineapple that's not behaving Behave, naughty pineapple. Oh my goodness. There we go. That's better. So we've got a sparkly palm tree, pineapple, a flamingo and a flower. So those were quite cute. And I got one of her I love crochet pins. Though my pin bag is getting a bit weighed down for pins so I might have to branch out and stop pinning on another bag I think but I do love crochet so that was appropriate and then I got this little chap I was trying to wash him down so you could see the packet but I'll just tell you uh, look this little llama 
four alpaca, I suppose it could be actually. I'm not sure how you tell the difference. Let's say he's an alpaca because that would make more sense in the woolly world, wouldn't it, if he was an alpaca. And so that was from Emma Jane Makes, uh, who was also there last year and I didn't get a chance to chat to her last year, but I did say hello this time. But yeah, I thought they were cute. So I got that. I thought it might work quite nicely as a, um, as well as pin like for a shawl, sort of on the light shawl. That's like a nice brooch because they've got a few that would be handy to have. Um, a little pin on and I have got a shawl pin but it's a wooden one it's quite heavy so if it's something really light like that it, it just pulls it but I thought maybe like a little brooch like this might work quite well so I thought I'd try that and if not it can just go on a bag and look gorgeous there and then some more stitch markers I just saw these and couldn't resist and this is from For the Love of Yarn I've actually taken one off to use but yeah, there's five of those, but it's got a little made with love on the heart at the bottom as well. I just thought they were really cute. And a little progress keeper stitch marks. So I think that's everything. I think that's everything I've got to tell you about and talk to you about. Goodness, this has got quite long. Because this isn't... Wow, I was just looking at the time and it's quite long and this wasn't even all of it because I paused. So I better shut up and go and let you uh, crack on with your lives and um, yeah, enjoy your holiday if you are having a holiday, if you have an opportunity for a holiday in the next month or so. But whatever you do, make sure you make some time for you and for your crafting because we need it, don't we? We need it. I need it. I bet you do too. Um, yeah, so thanks for being with me. Thanks for watching. Um, if you are new and you made it this far, my goodness, thank you so much. I hope you'll subscribe and hang around for next time. Uh, um, I will see you soon. Okay, bye. Oh, that just doesn't make sense. Shush. Um, right, so let's get into it.